What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm gonna show you guys just a quick little trick today, a little thing I've picked up along the way of editing. As you guys may know, sometimes if you run the lower camera tilt, especially on the GoPro, it's really easy to get props in your GoPro footage and props don't look good. It just kind of looks unprofessional to have props in the footage. So we always try and stray away from having that happen. And really the only way to do that nowadays is to either have like a dead cat style frame or something where the GoPro is really far forward on the frame. And that can really mess with the moment of inertia of the frame. So to have the GoPro further back and still not get props in the view, you basically have to just keep tilting the GoPro further and further up. But then if you start to run low camera tilt, then you just kind of see a lot of sky in the view and the GoPro exposure doesn't work that well, but you can fix that kind of if you've watched the last video that I just posted in which I go over the spot meter and how to use that and how it will save your footage sometimes especially if you run higher gopro tilt but lower camera tilt but regardless sometimes you just get props in the shot rather than increasing my gopro angle and risking my shots not lining up the way that i like i figured out a way to completely remove your props in post-production without cropping Usually to get props out of the shot, you have to crop your image in. It's pretty obvious, it doesn't really look that good. It really kind of zooms in the shot a bit too much and it just doesn't really look that good. Especially if you use a super view with that just ridiculously large IMAX looking field of view. And when you start cropping it in, you kind of lose that really amazing effect that you get with super view. And so to keep that effect, to keep that really wide angle look, but to get rid of the props, there are effects built in to editors these days that can help you get rid of them without changing your overall field of view. And that little effect is called lens distortion. So no matter what editor you're using, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro 10, or DaVinci Resolve, which is what I personally use, they all have a lens correction or lens distortion removal tool. Now I'm going to show you guys how I do it in DaVinci Resolve, but the same process goes for any other video editor out there that has a lens distortion or lens correction tool built in. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's hop in to DaVinci Resolve and let's take a look at how this effect is truly used. All right. Here we are guys, I have clipped out a little bit of footage I took earlier today. I went out and I lowered the GoPro camera tilt to 20 degrees. And as you guys can see, if we look through this clip a little bit, you can kind of see the props in the corners right there and it really just doesn't look that great. I hate props in shot. I have actually been running 30 degrees of GoPro tilt just to get them out of the shot for the longest time now. So now that I found this little trick out and I can run 20 degrees on the GoPro to match my FPV camera tilt, I am so excited. So the best way to go about doing this trick, especially if you do doing an entire video and every single shot has props in view. The first thing that I would do is once you have all your clips in the timeline right here, I would go into your effects library. And let's search for an adjustment clip. Now this is the same thing as like an adjustment layer in Premiere and I believe Final Cut Pro also has adjustment layers. And let's extend that out to the entirety of the clip. And you can put as many clips as you want to under this. You can put as much GoPro footage underneath this adjustment clip. And anything you do to this adjustment clip will affect everything beneath it. So if you put this lens distortion effect on this adjustment clip and you put 10 different GoPro files underneath, all of them will have this effect. And none of those GoPro shots will have props in the view. Once you've dropped your adjustment clip in and you've covered all of your GoPro footage with it, go ahead, click on it. And in DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna go ahead and head over to the Fusion tab. Fusion is basically DaVinci Resolve's version of After Effects. It's kind of the VFX special effects editor they have built into DaVinci Resolve. It's super powerful, I really like it. If you're coming from programs like Premiere or Final Cut or After Effects, it can look really intimidating because this is what we call a node-based compositor, which basically means it doesn't have layers like most video editors have, it has nodes. And as you can see here, we have one node here, another node here, and they're connected by this little line. Now, I'm not going to dive into node-based compositing and how it really works, but just the absolute basic level of how these works is if you see over here, you have media in. This is basically just pulling the media in from your hard drive, and here is the media out. As you see, your media in connects all the way to media out, and this is what is displayed on your timeline. And anything that goes in between here, or any effect you put, anything that you put in between these media in and this media out is going to affect the footage. So you can add nodes in between, which are basically just like little sets of instructions to tell Fusion what to do, how to change the footage before it sends it 
back into the timeline so you can actually look at your final product. Now, before I tell you guys how to do this in DaVinci Resolve 16, if you guys are doing this in Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or really any other editor out there, you're gonna wanna go to your effects library and you're gonna wanna search for either lens correction or lens distortion. So it's lens distortion for resolve. So you take that, drag that onto your adjustment clip and as you see in the free version of Resolve, you cannot use the drag and drop in the editor. And this is why for the free version of Resolve, which is what I have, we're gonna have to go back and do this in Fusion. It works exactly the same way in Fusion. It's just a slightly different interface. For you guys in Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro, following along with this, just pretend like I've drag and dropped on your lens correction or your lens distortion removal and changing the settings is basically gonna be exactly the same. Let's go back to Fusion and let's go ahead and add the effect in so we can tell Fusion how to correct the footage. So in Fusion, you're gonna hit Control Space and this is gonna bring up all the different tools that you have. And so for lens distortion, you're gonna type in the lens. As you see, it's the only option that comes up. Hit Add and here is our effect. As you see, we're just kind of moving around Nothing has happened to our footage yet. We still have props in view. So how do we go ahead and add this into our footage? How do we get this effect onto our final product? So as I said earlier, these nodes are kind of like little sets of instructions telling Fusion what to do to the footage. So to get the lenses to, to actually affect the footage, we're gonna have to place it in between media in and the media out. If you click on the right side of this arrow where it's blue, it will break that connection. Now you have your media in, put this over here on the left viewer. As you can see, this is just the raw clip we are watching. And as you can see over here, which is our media out, as stated up here, there's nothing because nothing is going to media out. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to link this media in to the lens distort. And then after the lens distort, we're gonna have to link the final product over to media out. So all you have to do is go from the output of media in, drag that to lens distort, and from here, take the output of this and drag it to your media out. And there you go. We have now added the lens sort effect into the pipeline and it is currently affecting the media out. We haven't changed any parameters right now, so it's just gonna be the exact same footage from the media in and the media out. So let's go ahead, click on lens distort, go up here to the inspector, go to lens distortion model, and here we're gonna get all the fun little things to play with. So I know on Adobe Premiere Pro, really the only thing you have to play with would be the distortion amount. So if you're using Premiere Pro, and I believe Final Cut Pro is the same way, all you're gonna wanna do is just take this distortion amount and you're just gonna wanna increase it until the props go out of the view just like that. And as you guys can see over on the left viewer, which is our media in, which is just the raw clip from the hard drive, there's still some props in the corner and over here on the media out, you can see those props are totally gone. The image is almost totally identical. So let's go ahead and drag this to the start, hit play, and I'm gonna let Fusion go ahead and pre-render all this stuff out so we can get a good playback of what it looks like. Six and a half hours later. So let's go ahead, let's play both clips side by side and see a before and after simultaneously of what this effect has done. So as you can see, the clip on the left has props in the corners and the clip on the right has none at all. And there really isn't any difference between the clips that you can really notice. The lens distortion effect is pretty hard to notice. I mean, really the only time you can see that anything's happened is if you really just look at the absolute edges and has just cropped the slightest bit only there, but the things in the center, have pretty much remained unscathed, which is awesome. Now, if you're an Adobe Premiere user or a Final Cut Pro user, this is pretty much the end of the line for you. You have removed the props with the minimal amount of information lost in your footage. Now, for you cool kids using DaVinci Resolve 16, like I am, what we're gonna do is you're gonna reset that distortion, put that back in, and we're gonna use the curvature Y function. This is a lot better for removing props than the distortion because the distortion brings all of the edges out, so you do get a little bit of overall cropping in. But with the curvature Y function in DaVinci Resolve 16, you can actually apply a little bit of vertical distortion only in the corners to really just take those corners and move them out a bit so you have the absolute minimal amount of cropping in your video. So let's go ahead and it's literally just as simple as taking this curvature Y slider and sliding it until the props are basically gone. And that's it, let's restart this clip. We're gonna let Fusion go ahead and render this out and we'll watch it back in a second. 12 seconds later. Resolve has rendered this clip and let's go ahead and let's take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison just using the curvature Y function on how this looks. So if we go ahead, let's hit play. You can see there's still props in the shot in the original clip that's not been changed. But over here, no props at all in the shot. And as you can see, it looks almost exactly the same as the source footage. 
This is by far the best way to remove the props from your shot. This curvature Y function is a savior for us FPV pilots, especially if you wanna run low GoPro tilt. I mean, if we look at this right here, there's almost no difference whatsoever between the left and right shots. It is almost completely identical. The only difference is those pesky little props are totally gone. And that is it. That is all you have to do in Fusion. Once you're back here at the edit page, anything under this adjustment clip that we've been adjusting is going to have that effect done to it. So it doesn't matter how many GoPro clips you have underneath, how many times you split these GoPro clips into 100 different ones, anything beneath the adjustment clip is going to get that lens distortion effect and it's going to remove all those props from your footage and just make it look so much better. <clears throat> no need for these anymore. So that is it guys, that is all. It's just one simple effect to totally get rid of the props in all of your footage and you don't even have to crop. You basically can just get rid of the props and no one is ever gonna tell the difference. I hope you guys liked that video. Super quick, just a quick little tip for you guys. I really hope you guys are enjoying these. I'm loving making these videos for you guys. Let's go ahead, let's watch a little snippet of what I shot today without any props in the footage. That is it guys, I hope you liked that little bit of flying. I hope you liked the little tip. Absolutely do not hit the like button. Do not subscribe, leave a nasty comment, dislike the video, do not turn the notification bell on, whatever you do, and make sure to join me for next week's video. 